The publishing and workflow system makes it easy to publish any of the data collected through your forms online. You have complete control over the layout of your data and can add search controls, drill down options to show details or related data, and create login pages to restrict access to the data you're publishing. This demo will walk through the creation of an internal HR application that can be used by employees to make requests, which then can be reviewed by a department manager. I've already set up the forms that we need to get started. I've created an employee's form which will hold all of our employee information, a manager's form that will contain an entry for each department manager, and an employee request form that will hold the requests made by an employee. Taking a look at the employee form, you'll see it's a fairly basic form that includes the username and password field from the special fields library. This field must be included on the form if you intend to add a login page to your workflow and want to use these records as login entries. Next, let's look at our manager's form. This form also includes the username and password field and will be used by the department managers when they log in to review employee requests. The department field, which is on both forms, is used to relate employees to a manager via their department. Finally, the employee requests form includes the fields an employee will complete when making a request. There is an important field named employee ID that will be populated with the record ID from the employees table when they make a request. And a department field used to relate the request to the department manager. These fields will eventually be hidden, but we're leaving them now for testing. Now let's get started creating the workflow. Click the publishing and workflow icon to launch the wizard. Give the new workflow a name and select a folder where you wish to save it. Next, we'll select our employee request table as our data source. We want to show employees all of their pending and past requests when they log in. Next, enter a header and a footer and upload your logo to customize the page. Next, we have the option of adding authentication. We'll do this later and just click Next to continue. We're now presented with our layout options. The workflow layout system is flexible. You have complete control over how each record is outputted and can even add your own HTML and CSS to further customize the layout. Here we're selecting the master template which defines how many items per row will be outputted or if we use a table layout. For this example, we're going to output the data in a table layout. From the list of fields provided, we'll select the ones we want to include in our table output. Select Finish to complete the setup process. The basic setup process is now complete, and a preview of your page is shown in the Workflow Designer. On the left is an outline of your workflow profile showing the pages in their hierarchy. Clicking on a page here will load its properties into the Property panel below. The Property panel is where you can access all the properties of each page. In the toolbar at the top right is the button to launch the Theme and Style window. There are multiple themes provided, and you can switch between them. There are also options to control the look and feel of the published page. What we are seeing in the Workflow Designer preview area is all of the records from the employee request table displayed. As you can see, there are multiple employee IDs listed. Let's add security to this page and restrict what is being displayed to just the logged in employee. The security node is grayed out when not enabled. Click on it and then change Enable Authentication to True. The system tells us we now need to select the member database, the database of users we want to use to restrict access to this page. Under Member Database, choose Employees. You'll notice that once we enabled security, an Edit Profile and Logout link were automatically added to the page's header, and that a series of pages below the security node are now shown. These are all the pages specific to a profile that has security enabled. Now that security is enabled, we can create a page filter to only show requests that belong to this employee. Click on the root page and open the Data Properties panel. Clicking Page Filter opens a filter window where we can craft a rule that says only show records where record ID equals the currently logged in user's record ID. Note the use of the current user dot field. With security enabled, these fields correspond to the currently logged in user and can be used throughout the workflow. 
Before we preview this page, I want to mention that under Security Settings is the Option Preview Record ID. You can change this property to see what will be displayed to each logged in user. Now let's preview our workflow. We are presented with the default login page. Let's log in as James. After logging in, we are now viewing only the request made by James, who has an employee ID of 1. Our security and filter settings are working just fine. Now let's return to the workflow designer and continue. What we want to do next is create another data page that shows past requests, and change the filter and the name on this page to pending requests only. First, let's rename the page, update the header, and adjust the filter to only show pending requests. I also want to update the menu to show pending requests. Now we're going to insert a new data page. We want it to go at the root of this profile. So first click on the root node and then expand the insert page menu and choose data page. Give the page a name and select the employee request data source. Next, create the data filter to restrict records to the currently logged in user and also to only records that are not pending. We'll use the same layout as our previous data page. Our new page is then created and automatically added to the menu. Now when an employee logs in, they can switch between pending requests and view their request history. The final step in this tutorial is to integrate the ability for employees to make a new request. In order to do this, we're going to integrate the employee request form with our workflow by adding a link to it from the main menu. First, click Save to save our outstanding changes. Click the Configure Main Menu link in the toolbar. We're going to add a new menu item. Menu items can be links to internal pages, external pages, or forms. Let's select our employee request form and choose that we want it to open in a light box. We also want to select Auto Close and Refresh on Close so that once the new record is added, the Lightbox window is closed and the page is refreshed so we can see the newly added record. The next step is really important. Click the Edit URL Params button and map the current user variables to their corresponding form fields. In order to associate the new employee request with this employee and ensure the correct manager gets notified, we want to pass the currently logged in user's record ID and department into the form to pre-populate it. On the next screen, we can make some adjustments to the display of the light box, and then we're done. The new menu item is added. In order to test it, we need to generate a preview. After logging in, we can now click the Make Request button, and our form opens up in a light box. You can see the employee ID and department are pre-populated. When we're ready, we would set these fields to hidden on the form. After a request is made and submitted, the window closes automatically, and the new pending request is shown. This concludes our demo on setting up an employee portal. Our next tutorial will look at how to set up the manager's end to log in to approve and reject employee requests.